This is Artifacts of Mars, and this is a video refutation of science versus the feelies. It's a very insulting title right from the start, because you'd think that we never uh, do any science. We just feel the Earth is not warming up. Um, well, that's half true, actually. Um, we're not even having a summer this year, apparently, here. It's going to be like, uh, 1992. Anyway, we'll take a look at the thermal conductivity of certain gases. 0 0.0146 for carbon dioxide. And then uh, nitrogen and oxygen, uh, both have the same number, 0 0.0. Four. Now, the higher the number, the better the conductivity, which means uh, less of an insulator this gas is. So, yes, oxygen and nitrogen, which make up most of the atmosphere, are basically not quite as good insulators as carbon dioxide are. Let's see what happens when you mix them together, however. Right here's the general range. Uh, they have less than Kelvin, I don't know why. But the general range is 2.4, 2.8, 2.6. You're getting a picture here. See, these gases mixed together have very high thermal conductivity. It means heat goes through them really well. We have a problem here, however, in that gases don't... Conductivity doesn't work the same with gases as it does with solids. Why? Now, you take uh, anything, a piece of metal, you heat it into an flame. The uh, end that you have in your hand is going to get hot. Why? Well, there are free electrons in, in metals. And heat, that's what transfers the heat in metals, is these free electrons. The heat just naturally spreads. Gases don't work that way because gases... Generally, the heat transferring gases is through convection. What? Convection? They told us radiation. No, convection. See, heat does radiate out into space. There's no question about that. But the most efficient method of heat transfer is convection. Not radiation. You see, people like Potholer, uh, they expect us to believe that the most efficient method of heat transfer is uh, radiation, and it isn't. So, it's, com it's uh, convection. And all that means is we have a turbulent atmosphere. This air is constantly getting moved up, down, up, down, up, down, to where the air is much thinner. So any insulating effect would be greatly offset by the fact that the air does move up to these uh, lesser, re uh, thinner regions like the stratosphere where there's very little insulating effect anyway. So that's where the radiation does kick in. So much of this is not going to be uh, insulated against anyway. Much of the radiation from heat from the ground. Well, you do have radiant heat going out in outer space. That's undeniable. You know, you know I see it all the time in winter here. It might be 35 degrees during the day. And night drops down to, you know, five degrees. 
Well, there's no denying there's radi radiant heat. Well, the point here is that these uh, gases by themselves are really, really good insulators, but they're mixed together. There's very little, you know, they have very good thermal conductivity. Which means heat spreads through them very quickly. And the higher, te higher the temperature, the higher the number. It's right here in black and white. So, let me give you a little scenario here. See, the b basic premise of the greenhouse effect is that some light comes down, hits solid objects, uh, and heats these objects. These objects uh, radiate what is known as infrared radiation, which is essentially long wavelength light. The premise is that CO2 is blocking that. From escaping. But anybody who lives in snow country knows that nights when uh, everything's clear, the uh, heat radiates out much more quickly than when the, there's a cloud cover. So our nights when there's a cloud cover are generally warmer. Now, we had a plethora of minus 15, minus 20 degree nights last winter. I've never seen anything like it. And then uh, Obama has the nerve to get on TV and say 2014 was the warmest winter, warmest uh, year on record, which is hogwash. I've never seen anything like it. Now, we're in... Another period, I don't think we're going to have a summer. It's rain, 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 rain. I don't mind it being a little cool, personally, but rain, 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 that's all we're getting. So, potholer 54 is way off base with this. Not everybody does everything by uh, feelings. It's very insulting and rude. I wish this guy would stick to facts instead of trying to insult people. As for global warming, I'm doing my own uh, little playlist called Global Warming is Neither. I got about 10 videos or something on it at this time. Well, the point here is these gases by themselves they have an insignificant effect on <laughs> this whole figure because air has a much higher thermal conductivity than these gases separately. Right here in black and white. The Earth's atmosphere has always varied. And these uh, so-called scientists have never taken the task about this. They're just expected to believe that the United States is the cause of every problem in the world, which simply isn't true. This is not about feelings. Many of us have seen the changes and we're alarmed. Now let's look at uh, Boston. This I mentioned Ice Age Now, not by fire, but by ice. This is Robert Felix's site. And I mentioned that this is a guy who says that we're having an Ice Age coming in. And what they're saying is that there's a modern minimum that may be coming in. The modern minimum is a period of 
way absence in the sun, little sp sunspot a activity, and as a result, it uh, the sun cools off, and we get less energy. That's another thing the liberals liberals never say is that when you, you have less heat transfer coming in, you're going to have less going out. Duh! What happens when you turn down the heat on a pan that's starting to heat up? You have the pan covered, and you cover the pan, then you turn the fan, flame down. What happens? It's going to cool down. That's what's going to happen. I'm not comparing our atmosphere to a pan. I'm just using that to, as a backdrop to show the absurdity of what these people are saying. But I have a special treat for you uh, concerning the snowfall from last winter. This is the city of Boston. It's still there. They still have snow, and it's summertime. City guesses on when lingering snow mound melts. This is from the Boston Globe, which is, I don't know if they're getting that, definitely left wing. Trying to secure a meeting with Mayor Martin J. Walsh. All you have to do is guess exactly when the giant South Boston snow mound, the lingering reminder of the relentless winter, will finally dissolve. It's still there. Although it's officially summer and temperatures have soared into the 80s, snow mound is, refuses to go away. Now here in sunny western New York, ours is long gone, but here, there in Boston, they still have snow on the ground and it's summer. You call that global warming? Utter hogwash. You see, that's feeling. We've been through the thermal conductivity and discussed the effects of uh, convection. You'll never hear a liberal talk about convection. Now this is feeling so. There's still snow on the ground. Eek! There's some reason for feelings, as in... What, we're supposed to believe everything we're told? Even when there's snow on the ground during summer? One of our uh, major cities? It's not even Alaska, for crying out loud. It's Massachusetts. And there's still snow on the ground. So, I'm going to say in conclusion, this person is deceptive. There are many people who are dealing with real science on this. Science isn't limited to those who are left-wing, uh, left-wing radicals. There are right-wing people who uh, do just as much science as left-wingers. As for CO2, I'm going to have one thing. As for CO2 being necessary, yes it is. Without that, we die. I've done that in videos before. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We have to have CO2 in the atmosphere or we die. We either starve or suffocate because plants... Well, this person didn't point out is that the plants... Uh, use CO2. The way they use it, though, is they, basically, they take the carbon and they discard the oxygen. The night plants actually use oxygen the same way that we do, but much slower, of course. So they take carbon out of CO2 and they discard the oxygen. 
they don't need a very high concentration. And what Potholers 54 said was basically that, well, the CO2 is that important to plants, so it must be important to uh, the temperature of the climate, temperature of the air, the climate. Well, not exactly. You're talking about a biological system versus climate. Those are two different situations. See, plants don't need a very high concentration. They just take what they need from the air and that's it. CO2, on the other hand, provides very little in the way of insulation compared to what there would be anyway. In other words, that thermal conductivity is, changes more with temperature than it ever will with CO2. Let's take a look at this grid again. You see how much this changes with temperature? In fact, I'm going to bring up my uh, little program here. Winter Fahrenheit. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. That's Fahrenheit temperature 70 degrees, 294. Basically, uh, 90. Oops. 305, so we'll take a look at this chart again. So you can see the thermal conductivity changes quite a bit with increasing temperatures. The thermal conductivity goes down with lowering temperatures. And what that means is, as air gets cooler, it becomes more of an insulator. So, actually, it isn't CO2 that has an effect anyway. It's the actual temperature of the air that has an effect. The biggest effect on insulation. Like I said, convection regularly recycles the air. Air goes up, air comes down. So you're constantly having this cycle where it's going up towards the stratosphere, radiating out heat. And if we don't have, didn't have that, then maybe they'd have the case. Well, I seriously doubt it anyway. So. This isn't about feelings. This is about real science. Thermal conductivity changes more with temperature than it does ever will with CO2 being added to the air. Now, if these sons of bitches got their way and they were able to scrub all the CO2 from the atmosphere, we're dead. I don't think there's a techno technological capability to do that, by the way. I think their schemes are pretty much meaningless. Wake up, people. This planet's getting colder, not warmer. I mean, when you have piles of snow on the ground, and it's almost July, something wrong. These people are liars. They want to institute a communist government in this country. Well, around the world, not just this country. And they never bring things like this up. Snow piles, and it's almost July. Well, duh. So, in conclusion, Potholer's video, Science vs. Feelies, it's very insulting, it's rude, it doesn't support the facts. These people on the left never mention things about 
convection and of course uh, thermal conductivity of the air and that type of thing they just come up with this fantasy most of the time they just come up with this fantasy and they sell the public CO2 is making the earth uh, get uh, bake we gotta do away with capitalism it's capitalism that's the fault actually more, it's mostly uh, not industrial activity but volcanic activity that causes this that's another discussion for another time, however. I'm on the facts of Mars. Thanks for watching. Still snow on the ground in Boston. And this is Saturday, June 27, 2015. Thanks for watching.